A friend of mine from my music theory class last fall sent me a message on Facebook, wrote it on my wall in fact, and stated that I should do an AMA. I'd been listening to my podcasts and I guess my stories about being in the security industry had fascinated him, so he thought, well, hey, why not do an AMA on Reddit for it? And I gave it some thought, and I really didn't think that doing a full-on AMA would really interest anybody. I mean, nobody really cares, I guess, I think, about security guards. And AMAs are, uh, I, I'm finding to be more and more along the lines of, can you make something sound interesting or are you like a celebrity or is what you're doing some sort of advancement for humankind, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know, we had like vacuum cleaner salesmen and some other people who've, you know, got your normal jobs. Maybe I'm just downplaying my own interesting qualities. I don't know. Anyway, I decided as a compromise to go ahead and do this podcast style. Now, he gave me six questions. I had asked him to just ask me a couple questions. If anybody has any further questions, I will be willing to continue to do this. So we'll just go ahead and get started and uh, see where this goes. So the first question is, what's been your weirdest experience on the job? This one's interesting because I don't know if you might call it weird in like the traditional sense of what most people might think of weird, you know, like something just oddly crazy and strange or whatever. I mean, yeah, I've dealt with, you know, guys in ditches and stuff like that, dealing with drunks, especially in Alaska. I never really dealt with much when I was working commercial industry buildings, but there was one instance and it was a series of instances, really. So I was working in this small office building and in this small office building, it's only about four floors. We had, you know, a, a reasonably sized outdoor parking area. We didn't have a parking garage and there was some covered parking. For the longest time, there's only one entrance into the entire parking lot. And a lot of people would sometimes, they would miss that parking exit or that entrance. And so there was a lot of times that people would like drive by and then the same car would drive in or sometimes people drive in and then out because they were in the wrong area. And especially because where we were at was very out of the way. And a lot of GPS systems were telling people to go to the wrong area too. My sister included, in fact. She came and visited me one night. Well, I would say about maybe two years after I started working there, they had done some massive construction in the area and there was a new road that they had put in. That road went to another major area. Bigger complex, bigger buildings and the like. And with the addition of that road, they created a new entrance into our parking lot, which makes perfect sense anyway. Especially, you know, because it's a good idea to have more than one exit, especially in a situation like that. So after the construction was finally done, you know, we finally had two exits, which is great for people who need to get in or come in and they're going the wrong way or whatever. You know, they make the wrong turn. I'm like, oh crap, I need to go onto the road that's there. All right, I'll do that. I noticed fewer and fewer cars coming in and still doing the like roll around. There was a thing, and I mean, I, I guess in a sense, I'm sort of delaying the question, but at the same time, I found this fascinating and I'd want to at least explain it. There were times when people would like come in and you could go all the way to the back of the parking lot. Now, when I say back, it's just you could go to the other end of the parking lot in a straight shot from the entrance. And that happened way more often. And I, I noticed there was people who used it as a means to try to get away. You know, I don't know if anybody was ever doing anything because I usually just tried to step up and make sure that they were visible. I used to take like my flashlight and shine their cars and they'd start the car back up and get out. You know, one time I started taking multiple photos of them. But this situation that I'm thinking of, this was after, like I said, the, the new entrance had happened. This didn't happen beforehand. 
on the rare occasion it did actually now that I think about it there was an area that you could like there was a trail that you could walk around in, in that area so people would stop in our parking lot and get out of their cars and walk off now generally I would miss out on these people I just never saw them there for whatever reason sometimes it's because it was at lunch or I was in an office talking to somebody for some reason or another it could have just been that I missed them you know I may have been at the back of the building while I was on patrol get back around they've already gotten they've already parked gotten out of the car and they're no longer visible and a lot of times I just didn't really care <laughs> to be honest that's a horrible security guard I didn't care so this kind of beat up car shows up one day and I don't know if like I was either frustrated or maybe it was just because it got to that point where if a car stayed for too long I wanted to do something about it in some way and we had some stickers that basically you know it was really hard to peel off stickers the ones that you you really got to put effort into and I didn't do it to certain cars I you know if it was in the middle of the day that was one thing um, or if I was just feeling shitty I might do it too and, and I know it sounds bad but you know bear with me I'm human so I decided to put a sticker on this car and I never saw the person come and the funny thing is I never saw him leave either Except for, I think, maybe once. I could be wrong. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So, I put the sticker on the car window. And I try to make it to where it would block the mirror. Because I wanted it to be obvious. And also, a thing where you absolutely have to try to peel it off. You can't just leave it there. Because some people, I think I'd had times where people had left it there. Well, I want to say, maybe a week later... I could probably go back and actually look at emails, but I don't really care to. <coughs> so this car is sitting there. I put the sticker on there. They come back about a week later. And for whatever reason, they haven't even taken the sticker off. And I'm like, really? You're going to do that? Fuck it. You're getting another sticker. I mean, I can't really do anything. It's not like I didn't have any power to tow. I would have towed the car at that point. I really would have because it was frustrating me. It was blatant. It was obvious. So I put up another sticker and I try to make it, you know, put it up in the corner further up. So it's definitely blocking even further. And so I, I do that and, you know, I think I think I saw the car leave at that point. Again, you know, I would wander around the building all night, so sometimes I'd be on patrol inside the building, and that usually took about maybe 20 minutes, I think. Maybe less, I think. Uh, was, I don't remember. It's been so long. I think it was about 10 or 15, to be honest. Pointless details. So, I take care of that, and I'm, I'm almost certain I see the car drive away, but I don't think I saw the person in the car. So... I'm like, okay, we'll probably never see you again. Less than a week, the same car's back. I'm like, what the fuck? Seriously, you're gonna stick around for, what the hell are you doing? Why are you here? It was the only car too. It's like, it, they weren't having like somebody else come up. We had, a, we had a time, I think, like three cars showed up one day. And I, I was just like, I had to stop them because we almost had no cars left in the parking lot. And I was like, I'm sorry, I can't let you keep your cars here because liability issue. Something happens, your car's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't give a fuck anymore. So, car shows up again, and I'm like, what the fuck? So I go out there. The stickers are removed at this point, but you can see the residue. And I'm like, all right. Done their job. And here's a funny thing, too. When I was working, one of my coworkers, I used to talk to him all the time, we got in some huge debates, and inevitably that destroyed our friendship because he, we're both asses to each other. Whatever. So, but he had told me that a really good way to make sure those stickers stay on is if you take like a quarter, put it flat up against the window and you just kind of rub it across it. It's kind of like taking your fingernail, but it's easier. And it, and it is in fact easier to do so because you have more surface area covering all at once. 
So apparently this person had decided to take him off. And I'm like, okay, this is a third time. What the fuck are we gonna do? So I email my boss and I let her know because she's property manager and I gotta let her know these types of things. I mean, I always put these in my daily reports. Just have to do these things. <laughs> so when I do that, I get an email back from her, I wanna say, an hour later. And she's like, well, you know, asking me questions. I, I don't know what the question is specifically. Again, I could go back in the history. I don't want to. And we're going back and forth at this point. And she's like, look, give me the uh, give me the license plate. I was like, all right. I get the license plate number for her. And she then gives me the guy's name. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I see how we're doing here. And I'm like, she, she, I don't remember specifically what she wanted to do on her end, but I was like, if you want me to, I'll just type out a very demanding note and I will put his name in large letters at the top because that's a psychological fuck me right there. Think about it. You come back to your car and your name is placed on it. Who knows your name? Well, how did the security guard know? Oh, he looked it up. It knows who you are. We know who you are at this point, dude. So, I type out this letter and I basically say, and I asked her at this point too, she's, she's like, look, if he comes back ever again, don't even, just call me, we'll get a tow truck. Don't even worry about putting stickers or anything else on there, just we'll get a tow truck. I'm like, all right, awesome. So, type out his big ass and, you know, get into Word and I'm doing all this stuff. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that he hasn't left yet. He usually sticks around for like an hour or two, I think, at least, if not longer. So, the good level of predictability in that behavior helped me out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get into Word and I think I spent like maybe 10 minutes typing this thing up, you know, just trying to make sure that I didn't sound like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and also trying to sound commanding. It's basically saying, hey, dude, you need to never park here again or your vehicle will be towed at your expense. And I don't remember the wording, but it, I'm pretty certain I was pretty stern about it because I, I was just tired of this shit. And then I go get duct tape, all right? And also one of the stickers. Because at this point, I'm frustrated with this shit. Because what happened? Uh, you know, it may be nothing. Everybody thinks, and myself included at times, you're just going to go park your fucking car. What's going to happen? You never know, though. That's the problem. And when it becomes somebody else's problem for you doing that thing, they're going to make it your problem. So don't fuck with that. So anyway, I... Uh, I go down there, I put the new sticker on, and I, like I said, I got it, I had it like down a little bit further, and then I went up and to the right, and I think on this one I went, I think I went further in to kind of fill out one of the blank spaces essentially. So it was, a, it was starting to form a larger rectangle. Then I took the duct tape and taped the letter on all four sides, all the way around. I mean, this is make it easier, I guess, to take off, but who cares? Uh, I just wanted to cover it with duct tape and I covered up the parking tickets and the parking sticker and the sticker residue with the sheet of paper because I know again that was in a good spot and plus it's a giant white spot on the car it's not like he's not going to notice and he's not going to get in his car and drive with that in the way there's no way I just wanted to add insult to injury by sticking that letter on that way and so I stuck it on there and I think I was there. I think at that point, I basically just waited to see when I could be wrong. Don't really know. But to end this little story, he left and never showed back up. Victory. Otherwise, I never really have had any interesting stories. I mean, I've had, we had a break in. In, or an attempted break-in on somebody's car while I was actually at work. 
but I never saw it because, again, I was inside somewhere. And it, the worst part is I felt so bad because I was like, I was on property for like, the worst part, I think it was like within the first hour of my shift. It really sucked. And I felt so horrible. And like, fortunately, it was a rental car and the woman who got it, she got full rental insurance. Because if she'd gotten like regular everyday liability or whatever that is, it wouldn't have covered it. And she would have probably had to pay for it, which sucks. We also did have, um, like, uh, we had a break-in during the weekend once. Apparently some homeless dude came in and he was gonna, somehow he managed to open the doors even though were, they were electro, electromagnetically locked, i.e. maglocked, as they always called them anyway. And so they shouldn't be openable that became an issue and I started testing it every now and then there were days where I could walk through doors that I shouldn't have been able to walk through I was like we gotta we gotta fix that because like during the day all four doors on the main on the, the the front of the building were open and same with the the exits as well you could you could walk into them without any problem but after I think it was I want to say seven they locked and the th three of the doors, you could not go through at all. There's no way to go through. Um, well, unless, of course, the mag lock fails. But <laughs> there was one door on that the front area, and then on the two exits further away towards the ends of the building, you could get through those as well if you had a key card. So there were three key card doors, and after hours, anybody with a key card could get in. So... Apparently, like I said, the maglock failed one weekend or something where it was having intermittent issues. Dude could, somehow gets in, and that's what's weird. Dude gets in, and this is the first time I've ever seen any of this. Gets in, like props the door open with like one of the plants. Like, he literally like goes, I don't remember what he, I think he propped it open with something at first, and then he went and like dug up a plant out of the ground. It was these long stalk like things. I don't remember what they were. And props the door open with that instead. Then he goes and gets a rock out of one of the plant beds. Big fist-sized rock. Apparently, he went upstairs to the second floor. How he knew all this, I don't know. I guess he just spent some time in the building looking. Because he found the vending machines on the second floor. And he busted through uh, the snack machine. And took as much stuff out. But apparently he was homeless because of the... I could tell, and now I can definitely tell. Uh, his clothes, very ratty, looked like they'd been worn a lot. And I mean, in Texas, that's not a good place to want to be home uh, to be homeless because the weather out there gets extreme. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I know it's, I've kind of rambled on for a little while, but sometimes I feel like having a bit longer time to do what it is I'm doing. So the next question, number two, what's the best part of being a security guard? Well, the pay for the he for the effort, hands down. Seriously, like the amount of effort, like physical effort for the most part, versus how much you get paid is pretty much the best thing. Beyond that, I'm not really sure. Like. The hours depending, like if you're, if you're great with being out at night and you don't have a problem being on your own and you can entertain your brain or whatever, however you want. And as long as what you're doing isn't in like violation of company policy or site policy or anything like that, you're fine. Really? You know, I mean, I, I was getting paid 12 an hour, uh, by the time I finished, I started at 10 and that was actually at the, uh, the behest of my security trainer at Job Corps. Do not take a security job for less than $10 an hour. Granted, that was almost 10 years ago, so, you know, <laughs> times may have changed. Maybe it should be 12, especially for me, because I would I made 12 last, and I'm not gonna do it anymore, so it doesn't matter. Sometimes, oh, let's see. I don't know. I mean, really, that's about it. I mean, 
yeah, you get a little exercise, and I, I will say, I got to learn a lot about myself, and I never thought I would. Really, I, I, th I never had even conceived of this. When I first got there, I was so depressed that I really couldn't like communicate with anybody, and I was just depressed anyway. I was in a bad place in my life, and I got a lot of time to think, a lot of time. You know, and there is a lot of time associated with, depending, of course, on your placement. You know, if you're at a building where you're standing for eight hours a day, maybe not so much. And there are buildings like that. The company I worked for, they had guards at one of the, at the Bank of America building in downtown Dallas. Apparently those guards basically just stood around for eight hours. That was it. Like, no thank you. Don't want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> that would kill me mentally and physically. I mean, sure, maybe my physiology, my, my anatomy and physiology and my I don't know fuck I, I might be in better shape probably not if I had to do that but honestly there's really not a whole lot beyond that I would you know it helped and I think that's one of the reasons why I don't want to do it anymore is because I'm done doing it that way I have moved into the next step of my life and I feel like I'm doing well so I think I'm good on that decision. I don't know what I'll do next. I only got so much money in the bank account that'll keep me afloat for a while, so we'll figure out what the fuck happens after that. We'll go ahead and move on to the next one. This one's actually what's the worst part of being a security guard. Everything. <laughs> one, hard-headed bosses that don't listen. Oh my God. Obviously we all have that problem. And I don't know if it's better or worse, but that's definitely a thing in that industry. But that may just be a thing in all industries because you have a boss who's hard-headed and doesn't give a shit about anything. You know, I mean, yeah, I can be hard-headed, but I also try to listen. I also try to learn. You know, I'm, I have arguments with people all the time and I may be maintaining my perspective at that point. That's not to say that I'm not going to change over time. And that I think is the most important thing that I've done for myself. Okay. <laughs> so the expected hours. There's a difference between the hours that you're gonna work and the hours they want you to work. For instance, the reason I am glad that I ended up in the position that I did was because I was the only security guard and they only wanted me there 40 hours a week. I had a solid week, prepped. However, those hours, a little weird because I was starting at 3.30 and ending at 11.30 p.m. <sighs> just, it just goes to show you that, you know, you're never really gonna be happy with anything, with everything in your life. You might be happy with something, not everything. And again, I was still going through a lot in my life, so I wasn't really able to take advantage of it. And I still feel like I'm not, but I feel like I'm also more aware of it and I'm more willing to take the necessary steps. Still got my own issues. I will always have issues until I die. That's how it works, people. Sorry, you're not gonna be 100% for like your 30s and 40s and 50s. There's always going to be something that needs improvement. Uh, more things that are wrong. Constant mental stress, even when things are okay. That's the crazy part. The days that I absolutely loved when I was working was usually Friday nights. You'd be thinking, why would the hell would you like Friday nights? That, that's it's Friday night, man. You don't want to work. Thing is, is that most people don't like working Friday nights. Okay, on Friday nights, most people in the building were gone after 6 or 7 p.m. On those days, when there were no cars in the parking lot, holy shit, it was like serenity. I could do whatever I felt like doing, within reason, of course, I mean, legally and within the scope of my job. I could walk around when I wanted to. I'd go outside, and I did this a lot. I'd go outside and just stand there and look and listen. 
and talk to myself. I may not even walk for like three hours. You know, sure, there might be a fire upstairs and, you know, on the third floor. But if I was there for three hours, I don't think it was, uh, it was much of an issue. So, and you know, I got, I got so accustomed to doing my rounds the way that I did. It just got to that point where I would do them anyway. And I actually liked doing them at that point. I liked it when there was nothing happening at all. And, and the worst part is you could say, oh, well, there's only one car and there's only the one guy. Sort of. That's where the problem lies. When there's even just only one guy there, you have to treat the building the same way as if there's 400 guys there. Because there's a person there who may at some point need assistance. So, although I never walked into offices unless they were their, their front door was unlocked, and then I would scan the place and you know make sure everything's fine, and then come back out, lock the door. And I never went back. Unless somehow the door became unlocked again, which is rare. Sometimes I'd, I wouldn't even know they were there. Like, I may not have seen their car or something. I don't know. Or maybe they were sharing a car, carpooling or something, and that person was going to give them a ride or the family member was going to ride, whatever. So sometimes it would look like the building was empty. Or it would... I would think that office would be empty and then the door would be open. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to have to do this. All right, whatever, go in. Security. Oh, hey, hey, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, to kind of go back to the second one a little bit, there were times when being a security guard had some advantages. And I mean this in a very like physical sense. Like, okay, even though our I believe we were told not to accept gratuities. Um, I was the kind of person who said, I don't, I don't know if it was like a flat out do not, or if it was something else. I don't know. I had guys offering me beer and stuff like that. I was like, I'll be willing to take it from you now so I can drink it at home. And it happened. Um, one, what was it? One Christmas, I got $100 from somebody. That was awesome. Um, still friends with one of the ladies because I found her three carat earring in the parking lot. She thinks I scanned for it. Like she thought, she thinks I like went over that place with a fine tooth comb. I have told her time and again, no, I did not do that. I was walking around scanning the parking lot like I usually would. And it just so happened that my flashlight shone on it i mean i tried to try to like i i may have gone a little bit and said okay well from the door to where a car was i'll scan that area a little bit but that's not even how i found it i found it because i was doing a patrol and i just happened to scan on it and it sh it just shimmered in the distance i was like that's probably her earring let's go find that you know and so i've you know i've been able to make some connections um Got some beers. Um, one of the guys, he had a... What is it? Um, Margaritaville Margarita Maker? You know, so he, he made me a margarita, put it in his own little container, and, like, handed it off to me. I was like, really? Well, thanks. That's awesome of you. I, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't get you anything. And this was still at a time where I felt like I absolutely had to pay people back. Because I didn't understand the concept of being given something because that person wanted to. I always felt like I absolutely had to pay people back. And that's not a good That's not a good way to go through life. Thinking that you owe people just because they did something nice for you. It doesn't work in your favor, ever. You know, it's one thing to do it because you feel like it. It's another thing if you feel obligated to do it. And I felt obligated at times. One play, one, one time uh, for the sort of the benefits and then I'll go back to the, the negatives. The same year that I got that $100 bill 
I got a $50 gift card to a place called Studio Movie Grill. This is a place where you can watch movies and eat food. Come to find out, you can also order alcohol, which was great. So I went, and I went on my own, I believe. No, I took my friend. That's what it was. I took a friend of mine. We went to go see the first Sherlock Holmes film. Got pizza, got beers. Um, then we got this cool ice cream thing that had these like big giant, like, I, I want to say they were like chips, but they were basically like waffle cones in the format of chips or something like that. It was, it was awesome. And the whole thing, I think, cost like a total of 70 bucks between the two of us. It's expensive, yes. Well, that was also a tip, I believe, as well. But it was totally awesome. And because of that, I kept going back. I went to go see Your Highness. I missed a scene in that film, which sucks. Um, but I've seen it I've seen it since, and I don't think I missed a very important part. I also went back and I saw Zombieland. I missed a scene in that. I actually missed an important part of that, but then I went back and saw it at another time in recent years and like saw it on the computer or whatever. Um, but it was because I was drinking and I needed to be. <laughs> okay, so going back to, you know, horrible bosses and constant mental stress. Like I said, you know, when people are there, I have to think about their safety. I have to think about what's going to happen. What do I do if something occurs? A lot of times there was an overlap between the good and the bad, you know, like weather. I loved, I loved just standing there watching the rain. But I was also thinking, what would happen if there's a tornado? You know, so it's weird stuff like that. There's also the, like, the constant need to be vigilant. You know, the fact that you're always, always on, no matter what. And that was why I loved those Fridays. Because even though I was still on, because there may be a car that's going to come in and it's going to be an employee who's doing some overnight work. But... At the very least, that was unlikely. So I didn't have a problem with that. Um, you know, that happened rarely, and it usually ruined my night, too, because it was usually one of the same couple of guys who worked in the same office, and they, when they worked at night, they worked all night. Like, there were days when I would get to the office, that guy's car would be there, it would be six, seven o'clock. Most people have already left. His car's still there. 10 o'clock. It's getting close to closing time for me. Still there. I'm leaving. Car's still there. Come find out. Oh, he left at like 3 a.m. Had to be at work at like 9 a.m. the next day. Like, what the fuck? Why not just put a bed in your office? You know? And that's one of the things I thought of when I worked in the, the very first building. I worked at this 20-story uh, building. Big, super fancy place. I had to wear a suit. I hated it, by the way. Another thing. Uniforms. Depending on what you like wearing will determine whether or not you don't like wearing the uniform. <laughs> um, I didn't like my uniform because I couldn't tailor it because I was broke. And I had just, been moved. I had just moved out. Oh, yeah. It was frustrating. So... And I moved out on my own for the first time, too, during security, so that was that was bitch. And like I said, having security guard manager who is a huge pain in the ass. The guy that I worked for in my second placement, because the first place, the big one, the one I was talking about, that one, there was places I was like, you have so much room in your office. You could literally put up, a, like, create an actual wall with a door in it and make the other side of it a hotel room. Like, there were some offices that were bigger than houses. Seriously, more than 2,000 square feet. I'm not even kidding you. And this is one office. Not one office suite where you have multiple offices inside of it. This is one dude's office room. Seriously, this was insane seeing some of these things. The headstrong boss that I worked there, he was kind of a dick because he was like, you need to be here 15 minutes before work. Oh, you're not going to get paid for that, by the way. What? 
No, if I'm going to be here 15 minutes before work, I'm going to get paid 15 minutes before work too. So that means I'm going to make 15 minutes overtime every damn day. No, it didn't work. I was glad that we lost, that my company lost the account to worry the building because then I got moved. I think I had been off for like maybe a week when they replaced me. And the new building that I worked at was in this small building complex. There was three main buildings. And I worked in only one building and then there were some guards who worked in other buildings. And if they wanted to, they could work extra hours. Now, this kind of goes back into that whole like expected hours part that I mentioned earlier. So because there were multiple security guards, there were 24 hour security for both sets of buildings. So like there was one group of 24 hour guards on the one new building that I worked in. And then there was a group of security guards that worked the other two buildings. I don't really know why, but whatever. You know, I guess it was just because they were so close and it had already been set up like that. And so they're like, oh, hey, third building, let's just go ahead and add another crew. All right, whatever. My boss was an idiot. I, I don't even really care about, like, explaining why he was an idiot, except for the fact that he was an absolute hypocrite. From the things that I had heard, obviously, none of these are founded because I don't know specifically, but some of the things I heard were, like, he was doctoring hours for his work and this, that, and the other, and, you know, whatever, and... Uh, it was frustrating. Come to find out a couple years later, he didn't just get fired. He got his ass into a sexual harassment lawsuit. So not only was he fired, probably had to deal with a lot of fines. And then on top of that, he's no longer allowed to work in Texas as a security guard. Probably not much anywhere else because he did it on the job. So there's that. Um, at that office complex, there was an office in the building that I worked and I ended up talking to somebody about it because they, they, a lot of people were, it was a new building, like I said, so there were more and more offices coming in. One of the relatively new offices, I saw them put in, because they actually wanted us to go into offices in this building, um, like intentionally, every patrol you had to walk through. I was like, all right, whatever. Well, they put in a new vending machine and I was like, the hell what the hell it's 25 cents no way so i end up talking to one of the guys who works there and like yeah if you want just go ahead and grab one no big deal it's like a cold soda for 25 cents holy shit this is when they were already approaching like 75 80 90 cents now with fucking 12 ounce cans of buck Ugh. No, they weren't better days. They were just cheaper days. <laughs> um, across the way to the other side, and I never went over there except for maybe once or twice, and I wasn't able to benefit, but Red Bull actually worked in that building. Like, one of their main offices was there. They had, like, two Red Bull vending machines. You just push a button, and one comes out. And apparently, from what I heard anyway, like, security was allowed to just go up there and get, like, two a night. I was like, what? What? Red Bull free? Twice a night? What? Well, that's a good way to get addicted. So I was like, well, shit. <laughs> Wish I worked over there. He's like, oh, uh, the one guy that, you know, I talked about kind of cut ties later. He's like, oh, man, you just can just come on up whenever you want. And I was never in a position to. Um, so that that's the thing. Oh, the, the, the sort of expected hours, the, I would say, mandatory shift extension times. <laughs> One of the guys, see, I had what you call a flex shift at that building. I worked five days a week, just like everybody else, but I didn't work the same hours. My first day of the week, I worked 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. The next two days, I worked 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And in the last two days, I worked from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Suck. Suck, 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 suck of the balls of sweatiness. Super suck. Because although I had 24 hours off between my shifts, it fucked with my sleeping schedule. It's like, oh, hey, I got to get up at like 4 a.m. and leave by 5 so I can drive 45 minutes to work. 
and to hopefully be on time. And then it's 6 a.m. when I start. I get off at 2. I go home. I got to deal with some manner of traffic. Fortunately, not too much. But still take about 45 minutes to get there. Because it was a far away place. But it was the only place they had for me at the time. So I was like, well, fuck, I don't have much choice. I didn't have a car payment at the time, which helped. But I did have a crappy car. I got decent mileage. like 22 miles a gallon at the time. And for a car that was about 10 years old at the time, that's pretty good. So, I did that for about four months, I want to say, four and a half. It started in January, no, no, I started in December, and I left, I want to say, started at the new place on April 5th, somewhere around the time frame. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... That was also another thing. It was like, if you ever get replaced, placed elsewhere, it may be further away and it may be really far away. So you end up having to commute quite a long ways. And I mean, where I had to go was either A, take a long route that went through certain sections of neighborhood with like lights and stuff and it took longer, or take another long route, but go up the toll road. And I didn't want to do that. I was like, I even asked. And that's the funny thing. I asked my boss. He didn't really give me much of an answer. He kind of laughed in my face, to be honest. And then I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to go over his head. So I went to the property management. I was like, hey, is there a way for me to get um, a toll pass? You know, I think it would make my life a little easier getting to work. And I think they said something like along the lines of like, we'll think about it or whatever. You know, that's pretty much the business version of no. And it came back, and he got in my fucking face about it. And I was like, look. I wasn't nearly as confident then as I was now, as I am now, I guess. But I was like, look, I just need an easier way to do this. If they're willing to do it, then that's great. But if not, don't get on my ass about it. I'm just trying to ask a question to make my life easier. He didn't understand. And he kept getting on my ass about stupid things. Hell, one day, he actually got on my ass for being too thorough. What the fuck? This is a brand new building, okay? Whenever it rained, and when it rains in Texas, it typically rains a lot for a brief period of time, or it rains a little for a long period of time. Literally, the summer after I switched to my very last place, so like the last building I was working at, not the first summer, but the following summer, it rained almost every single day throughout the entire month of June. It was the first time in I don't know how many years we didn't have 100 degree days in that summer. That was weird. It got in the 90s, but we never hit 100 in the area. And that was fucking crazy. Uh, an interesting reprieve, especially because the, the creek behind my building where I was working had rised up so high it actually got to the retaining wall. <laughs> now the retaining wall is like five, eh, four feet tall. But, and, and also it's at the widest point, which is, which is above, you know, everything else. So it still had a long ways to fill up. But it could have done it if it kept going. <laughs> we had a lot of rain that summer. Holy shit. I think it was 2007. Oh man. Anyway, my boss, he, you know, fuck him. I don't care. He's an asshole. Anyway, getting back on the other thing, I still have to talk about his ass anyway because of the stupid shit. So one day, I come home, I get to work, right? You know, like, I hear about, like, some sort of gas leak or whatever that had happened because on the other end of our parking lot, because in this building I was working at, we had this long building, and on the end of it was a giant parking structure. It was, like, five stories, I think. And then on the end of the parking structure, there's like the small shopping section that they had built on for like a small shopping center. So they put, you know, extra build, you know, whatever, stores and shit. It kind of makes sense because, you know, that's, that's how you optimize space and make a lot of money and a massive ass parking lot too. So, 
Apparently during the construction in that area, when they were still sort of like finalizing it, there'd been a gas leak and one of the, the, the morning guy uh, that I replaced for that one morning shift, he, uh, he was basically standing outside all day. And at the end of one of my uh, 10 p.m. shifts, when he was supposed to be coming back on the next day, he calls me at like five till, says he's not gonna come in. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, oh, I already called our boss. I'm like, and? What's gonna happen? He's like, oh, you're just gonna have to stick it, you're gonna have to stay in. I'm like, no, fuck you. This is the end of my week. Get your ass up here. He's like, no, well, I mean, I, I feel pretty ill from like standing outside, but you fucking stood outside the whole time. Outside, it's not like you were inside an enclosed room getting, you know, what the hell knows in your lungs. And I believe it's natural gas. It's not that bad when you're outside, you know, in a well ventilated area. And also, why the fuck would you be standing in the exact same place the whole time? You know, do you have any sense? Apparently not. So I make up this bullshit excuse to get the fuck out. And I call my boss and I'm like, look, it. This is not proper protocol. You're supposed to call and ask to get a replacement. You're not supposed to expect the dude who's already there to do it. He gets in my face about it. I'm like, look, I've got somewhere I've got to be. Now, this, it was a supposed doctor appointment that I needed to drive my mother. I'm like, look, I got my mother. I got to drive her to a doctor's appointment. This is based on, this was based on actual events. So I knew what to do what to talk about. I was like, look, she's gonna be getting a specific type of procedure done where she's gonna go under, she needs to have somebody drive her back. I'm the only one available at the moment, okay? I'm sitting on my hands until like fucking 10 and then he decides to jump. One, his job starts, or not 10, eight. His job starts at six anyway. But there was no need for me to have to take on that. I still stand by it. He fucked up. And my thinking is, because there were rumors, of course, so these are unfounded, he's drunk. He's coming to work drunk. He was probably drunk. And he didn't realize it until it was really close to work that he couldn't fucking come in. So he calls my ass, talking about the gas leak from the day before, somehow making that, you know, convincing, I get, but it wasn't. And then my dumbass boss is trying to side with him. And that's when I realized, you know, when I kept hearing things, from various people that they, they basically had each other under a bus because of the shit that they were doing. Like my boss, obviously, like I said, he was doctoring the pages. Well, apparently so-and-so dumbass drunk knew that and held that against him. But he basically used that as leverage to be drunk on the job. What the fuck ever? This is just retarded shit. Just to deal with not only just dumb drama, but like stupid drama. And then because of that, I'm like, fuck you. I, this is my day off. I am the only one here with the stupidest fucking hours. I want my time off. So I, I get it. But then he's like, look, you got to bring do documents and blah, 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 which is fucking stupid. And I should not have listened to it at all. And I don't even know why my mother decided to go with it because she should know. You know, she was trying to get into healthcare at the time. There's fucking HIPAA laws. You're not allowed to know other people's medical issues unless you are a medical practitioner and you're working on them. So don't let anybody say stupid shit like that to you. I think I may have covered the time on that. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about 50 minutes in almost. Okay, let's keep going. Fuck it. I got three more questions to go. What would I do to try and pass the time? Okay, this one's really relatively simple. When I had internet, well, I used internet and I ended up getting, I had a, I had a really crappy phone situation for the longest time and then I finally got a uh, smartphone close to the end of my time there. I think I had it for maybe a year before I finally quit. So most of the time I didn't have internet. And at the time, internet was still weird. When it came to accessibility, it's like I knew how useful it was. I had internet at the house, 
I could do everything and I did everything on the internet at the house, but I didn't have any like on hand internet. And so it kind of made me think a lot about how to get internet or what I could do with internet. Now I do all those things and I do them in such a way that they're no longer interesting. <laughs> you know, look this thing up whenever I can. Uh, when I had internet, I basically used it to watch YouTube videos, get on Twitter. Uh, that was pretty much it. And then when I finally got a computer, I could, you know, really kind of get in it. And I got on 4chan. And so that's kind of how I spent my time when I had internet. But when I didn't have internet, which was most of the time, the first two buildings that I worked at, I really couldn't bide my time that well. Um... I did start bringing an alarm clock with me just to listen to the radio because I was like, I, I can't, I can't do this. You know, it's dead at night, it's boring, and again, this is the first time this ever happened, so I don't know how to deal with it. And then I would bring like books and stuff, and sometimes I just sleep in my chair. <laughs> I'll be honest, I slept more at work at security guard, at being a security guard than I probably ever should admit to. Um. But when I got to the new building, the last building, I only worked at three different buildings when I was in Texas. The last building, I wanted to get some kind of battery powered radio because I couldn't, I didn't have a plug. And so I looked up online, and I think I got it on Amazon, and I got this really cool wireless, uh, well, portable radio, of course. So, what I come to find out though, it has the ability to tap into TV channels. Now it is only able to go from like channel two to 13 or something like that. But that's when I started listening to show, television shows. I'd listen to things like Heroes and Big Bang Theory and Eli Stone and stuff. This was like right before the, the writer's strike happened. And then the writer's strike happened and everything started going downhill. And then they did the switch from analog to digital. And so it didn't work anymore because it was an analog only. I was like, well, that's a bummer. So I started listening more to music. Um, but then I got a PSP at some point. I don't remember specifically when I did it, but it was still at that place. And I think it was probably after that point, but I got a PSP and I played video games on it. And, you know, because I could, I started like, uh, I hacked it. So I made it homebrew and then I put emulators on there so I could play Game Boy Advance games on it. And that was fun. That's when I found out about uh, Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Great game. I've even got it on my computer. And, you know, I mean, it's just like, so basically just digital entertainment whenever I got a chance. And a lot of people didn't seem to mind. I mean, I never really had any tenants in the building feel as if I wasn't doing my job. Or at least I didn't feel that way. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what I would do for passing the time. Uh, let's, I guess, move on to the next question. Did people you encounter on the job treat you differently than you feel would be normal? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, there's really no way for me to know. I mean, probably. Because I didn't see those people outside of work. And so I didn't see them differently. Um... I think after a while, the people who got to know me became more comfortable and then just, you know, it was like, hey, what's up, dude, kind of thing. Um, you know, it's probable that because I was wearing the uniform, you know, some people thought it was sexy or intimidating or whatever. I'm not really sure. And because of the time, you know, I was just an idiot when it came to women, I still am. You know, I really do need to just tell the people that I'm attracted to that I'm attracted to them, but I always fucking suck her out. I always puss out for some reason. I don't know why. I don't even know why that's, about, that's relevant, but whatever. So, honestly, I'm going to go with probably. But there's no way for me really know, to know for sure. Um, so I guess I'll just move on to that last question. Would you try to look more intimidating or vigilant? Um, I think... Below the surface, there was some willpower to do so, yeah? I mean, there were some days, I mean, in general, I would say no, I guess. Uh, some days I might, otherwise, not really. I mean, I, I do remember uh, this one occasion I had, like, decided to just kind of, like, 
shave my head really, really short. Now, I may have... There's only been a couple of times in my life where I've actually taken a razor to my head. And I don't want to do that anymore because it's annoying to do. Um, But I guess because I had like a decent amount of hair at the time, even though it was thinning. So... I think because I had like a lot of hair at the time and it was still, you know, poofy or whatever. And then like just the next day, instead of getting a haircut like I typically did, I just chopped it all off. And one of the guys was like, oh, dude, that's you. What do you mean it's me? So like, well, I saw you walking around and I thought it was just some new guy who like took over or whatever. You know, he looked, looked all intimidating and shit. And I was like... Really? You're saying I'm intimidating looking with my bald head. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I guess in that sense, I definitely attempted to look more intimidating because, I mean, that was what I got. Um, obviously, you know, when my supervisor showed up, stuff like that, obviously, I'd try to appeal, appear more. Because, fuck it, the Hawthorne effect's real. You know, especially when, like, um... The property management people would show up, especially my property management lady's boss. When she showed up, I, I was like on the straight and narrow because I hated that woman so fucking much. I hated her because she was such a snide bitch about every fucking thing, right? Like, I, I don't even remember. I just remember how she made me feel. And, and that's one of those things that I remember, like one of those quotes that says something like, People aren't going to remember what you say to them. They're going to remember how they how you make them feel. And it's true. I did not like her. Like, I would be there and I would try to offer my impression on something that I felt I was, a, you know, a valid perspective on. And she'd basically dismiss me like I was an, an annoying child or some shit. It was so fucking annoying with her there. But I didn't want her to have the the audacity to even have consideration that she could get me fired. Because the people in that building liked me. My boss liked me. My supervisors that showed up on site every now and then. I'll talk about them in a little bit. as sort of a bonus as well. Um, everybody seemed to like me. Now, there's occasions where I might step on some toes. You know, I, I did say some stupid racist shit. And it wasn't really intended to be that way. It was like, there's a black girl who showed up and I was an idiot, okay? I was asking her about behaviors within the black community. And I'm like, looking back on it, I'm like, how fucking stupid was I? Why would she know? You know, why would I ask her? That makes no sense. And so like her boss came over to me, I think the next day and he was, he was talking about it. I was like, I really feel dumb for doing that because I don't even know why I did it, to be honest. I, I don't, I didn't mean anything by it, blah, blah, blah. Come find out, apparently she made his life hell after she quit, so fuck, I don't even know. <laughs> it's like, apparently she just up and quit one day and then, like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of drama that happened in there. And, and to go back, I guess, to number two, there, there's a surprising amount of good things that came from being a security guard. And I guess in a way that's good that I think of it like that. Because you, you got to look at your past in a positive light. Even if it was shit. Look at the good stuff. Hang on to the good stuff. So I'm going to hang on to the good stuff. Even though I don't want to do this anymore. That's not to say that it wasn't good in some way. And if I hang on to the good stuff, the bad stuff just disappears in the background. And all I'm left with is the good shit. So, it, I, I don't have to hold on in the sense that I'm like, oh my god, I just, I have to remember these things because this is the only thing that ever made me happy. Now, fuck that noise. Remember it, understand it, and it makes you a happier person on a regular basis. So, as you can tell, I like to talk. Check the time. <laughs> <laughs> How long have I been talking? Obviously, there's some editing, so if I go into my actual... I mean, at this time when I'm talking, it's just over a minute, almost two minutes. Or an hour and a minute, almost an hour and two minutes. For you, it might be different because I've edited some shit out, like coughs and stuff. Although I might not, who knows? 
Maybe let's fucking keep it like it is. Probably not. Anyway, because I like to talk, I like to talk. And so I would talk to people. Sometimes I would be talking to people as they leave and they'd fucking stay for like an hour after they got off of work. They're still in the same building where they work, yet somehow they're willing to stand there and talk to me. I never picked up on it. Not once did I ever think, hey, this person might like talking to me or something. No, I just thought they didn't want to go home. And that might have been true. I don't know. But, or maybe they just wanted to be nice and they didn't want to interrupt me. And so they spent 30 minutes listening to my dumb ass ramble on for who knows, for what knows, whatever's. Yeah, logic. <laughs> The UPS driver, used to see him pretty much every day. He was a great source of information because he talked to a lot of people in a lot of different buildings and we would gossip. We would gossip so, so much. And he actually gave me a lot of good pieces of advice too. Like he was an older guy who's probably at the time like in his 40s I think early 40s maybe actually no I think he was older than that he looked really good he looked like he was in his 50s or no he looked like he was in his 40s I think he was like early 50s or late 40s um but he's in really good shape and everything and so he had told me various things um and one of them I had I think I expressed to him at some point that I was ashamed to see this very attractive woman at work super super hot I was ashamed to find her sexually attractive he's like why why would you be ashamed of that that doesn't make any sense you, you don't have to you're not doing anything wrong I was like but I, I'm, I'm I'm objectifying her basically he's like no you're not you're not doing th anything to her. you're thinking about her so like, is that objectification of like your girlfriend because you're thinking about her no, you're, you're just a guy and you're a human. You have sexual urges. You know, you're keeping it respectable. You're not pursuing it. You're not going to jump out. You're not going to abuse your position, you know, so there's no reason. And it didn't sink in for a long, long time, like longer than it should have. So, you know, that's good. But like it, the camaraderie, I always had somebody to look forward to talking to every day. Um, also, it, along the same lines too, and, and I think this is the overlying sort of idea of what was great about working security, it was conversation. I had two different supervisors who'd show up on site every now and then, roving supervisors. I had one boss who stayed at the, the main office and did his thing. And then I had two supervisors show up and, you know, they made sure that I was basically, you know, like not sleeping on the job. Uh, they were making sure that I was effectively presentable um, and, you know, basically just making sure everything's on the up and up. They're looking at me to ensure that I am making the company not look like shit. And I learned a lot about a lot of things. Apparently there was this place where we had some security guards in uh, downtown Dallas where it was basically like a high-end apartment complex, basically a condo, where it was a bunch of very young, very rich people. We're like talking mid-20s, a lot of money for various reasons, business, whatever. And because of this, there was a lot of sex and sex-like behaviors that happened there. Not only that, there was a lot of money being thrown around like they had a party every Friday and it was catered and it had a ton of fucking food and they were always offering it to the security guards. Like the, the one officer that would talk to me about this place, he was actually working there at certain points. And I mean, he'd see women walking through like in a bikini bottom topless and you know, like amazing shape and all that stuff said that there were times where they had to stop sex parties in the pool. I mean, it's just the, the insanity at this place, like the decadence and the hedonism. It's just like, can, can I work there? 
Can I work there? Because they were getting free food all the fucking time. And then there was the other guy. He was a little more on the personal side of things. We didn't talk so much about like gossipy type things. It was more just like kind of getting to know each other in a sense. You know, I mean, hell, I knew I talked to him often enough and long enough that he was willing to tell me, you know, about how he proposed to his girlfriend and, you know, the marriage. And like, I think when I left, they had already been married. Uh, so, you know, it was just, it was nice to be able to talk to people about a wide array of things. And I look back on it and I think, you know, for the time, I was probably perceived by a lot as much more intelligent than other people of that age group because I was able to talk to so many different people I mean not about everything but I could have discussions about science and religion and politics and I could do it and I still can I can do it in a very even manner I can be reasonable instead of overwhelming and emotional and, and, and oppressive with my perspective. I mean, it's, I still got strong opinions. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I do what I can to at, at the very least try to understand the other side. And ultimately that's, I, I think that may have been why people gravitate to me is because I try to be intelligent and reasonable. Maybe that's why you're listening to this right now.